If you want to know how to play like Asu and Master Ash, this is the video for you. Don't believe me? Watch this clip. Bro, don't. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Armor swap. Oh, he hit that. Not a lot Ooh. to do here, huh? Get the climb. No. Uh oh. Uh oh. Woo! All oh, amped up shots. Woo! We're fine. We're fine. Can't hit him. Oh! Another oh, swap! Dude! Final ring? No. That's how you do it. Welcome back to Five Rules, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to watch and hang out with one of the best players, one of my favorite players to watch in Apex Legends, Asu. He is a master. When I say a master, so, I mean a, a master. Check out this guy's Twitch. Follow him. He's got 2.1 million followers on Twitch, but he's just about everywhere else on YouTube, on Instagram. We're going to watch a video from his YouTube today because I was actually looking at this because it's got 1.6 million views. And, of course, along with his 1.5 million subscribers, which you guys definitely have to hit the subscribe button, turn on those bells for Ace. The key is he plays Ash in a really beautiful way. Now, he's typically a Wraith main, but as you might notice as an Apex Legends player, Ash and Wraith fill similar roles. And as a commentator, I've started to see in the ALGS Ash taking on that Wraith role. So we're going to break down why he's so good at Ash, but we're also going to give it to FPS players, general people who like watching sick clips, good games, and also learning how to be a better shooter, a better player, a more thoughtful player. We're also going to take this and break it down for you guys as well as we watch it and get into our five rules. The first thing I want to mention before we jump into this is that fundamentals are more important than character knowledge. There is one big exception. I want to get into that in a little bit, but I want to just say the fundamentals of what Asu is doing is stuff that Asu loves to do. He's going to be doing it on Ash, but you'll see a lot of the things from our old video the still showing up here. Butt. Oh. Anyway, oh, yank. There is no way your ping is so good. Oh my god. Well, how do you do? How do you Everything's do this? mine. Everything's mine. I Goodbye. Have, I have no gun. I have a sentinel. What about my clip? No shot. You getting beat off right now? No, I'm fucking just trying. You getting beat off by Loba? I, I do not mind. My man. Oh, wait. <laughs> Devo? That was an actual AI I just killed. There's no way I missed that. I'm sensitive. Oh, you're telling me. I missed him. Absolutely dead. All oh, your money. Oh. Switch to Warzone, brother. This just is not your game. How's that Gibby yeah, doing over him. there? The Gibby's just so low. Dude, dude, dude. I just no. have a central goal, man. This guy's a fing shotgun. Oh my god, I'm out of off the map. There's a guy right there. There's a guy that went inside, I think. Oh, 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 crawling oh, around, oh. oh lord. Okay. Guy's getting I gotta figure out what's happening. I'm kinda don't lost. Close, don't stop opening the fucking door. You bastard. <laughs> so many things oh, right oh, here. Oh, There's oh, so oh, many oh, things oh, right oh, here. Oh, oh, Go to that door down there. Dude, I was cracking everyone with something. I just went down. This guy resing right below you. Right below you. Oh, oh no! It's still going. 
Oh that my God. All right. So there's so many great things to talk about here, but I want to mention my first statement. Fundamentals are usually more important than character knowledge. There is a big exception, but I want to walk you through some of the fundamentals you see Asu do and that I covered in his last How video that we saw right here. You're going to look at him do one thing that you should notice. He'll play the same room. After he gets this kill, Asu's actually going to go back into this room with his buddy. And he's going to play this angle a lot. You're going to see him do this little circle where he'll find damage here. And he'll also be willing to go back to kind of his reset zone. Plays outside, plays back to the other room, checks angles, and is willing to go back in that same path. One of the reason being is that he can dictate where players are coming at him from during that. You also see another little moment right here. We talked about this in the It's Timmy video. He says it's a bot. But really, look, he's doing some really good crouch aim movement right here. He just... Hits the hip fire. He's hard to hit. That guy does try to hit a shot. I don't think he's got a chance because Asu is just doing some nice little crouch uh, hip fire aiming, which we talked about gives you more speed to maneuver, and he's coming right back to this corner. So he likes making play predictable. He likes using those techniques that allow you to, again, change your speed, crouch moving, crouch aiming. There's a crouch here, hit fire here, goes into the ADS there. Part of the reason is that he's able to laser those final few bullets, which you'll see he does really, really well. But there's one big exception. If you are not a fundamental player and you just, you're like, what's the other exception, Rain Dame? Going from a defensive to an offensive style is not an easy transition for everyone. Characters sometimes do take precedence over your fundamentals if you're overly attuned of to one style of play or you're inept at the other. That means bad. In this rare case, fundamentals are attached to the character. So as a player's schema of how to play Apex is through that role, think of a person like a tank main in Overwatch, right? They're not going to hop on a Widowmaker and be successful. They always play Reinhardt or they always play Gibraltar. Playing this kind of free-flowing style is going to be very difficult for them, and that also leads to our point two, which is a new topic I don't think anyone said in Apex, feel rhythm players and static players. I'll explain that in a little bit, but let's continue watching this video, uh, and you guys keep yeah, picking things up. Remember, in the comments, if you have questions, watch. write them. We'll talk about them. We'll break down other things. You bastard. All right, so we're about right here. What's it called? I'm clueless. <laughs> Really, the Watson gamers are not here. She like went away, I think. Wait, this is a dead end. Did get the point for the Gibby? My dude does dash. <clears throat> Down the bottom, I don't know if I finished him. All over here, he's just run. He popped his ult to run. Oh, I found the Gibby. Good dipping underneath this lip right here. Okay, so he's so not to play what I just did. Beautiful. Ult, this has purple. He doesn't like it. I like that. Oh, give me flesh. Oh, he's actually one HP. If you can tickle him. Tickle him. One guy's under me still. So many good things there. Uh, one of the things I want to mention is I want to do get into the feel and rhythm players. This is a different topic. This is where you need to look and examine your own game. He says he did something wrong there. But part of it is that when you notice the way Asu is playing, he's actually not doing things um, too premeditated. He's actually feeling out the game. This is someone who, when they start warming up, when they start playing the game in a way, they start to naturally do stuff that you couldn't really plan. It's almost like the 360s, the bunny hops. I think Dizzy was a player like this as well, if you remember watching him. And there are more consistent players who are static. They have the same play style. They like to do what they know works. They are not trying to do flashy stuff. They're not playing with that moment, doing a lot of improvisation. And that is where you might see your different style of play coming in. As a feel rhythm player, though, what you're going to notice is Ash, because of the ability of the tether, which helps create difficult situations for players to play around. Uh, also, the ultimate, which allows her to make quick escapes or quick re uh, quick re engages back into the fight. Asu, as a field player, has a lot more options to naturally be more creative. And Ash really is why, I think that's really the reason this video blew up so well. Uh, obviously, it was early when Ash was coming out, but it's also, it fits his playstyle so well, very much like the Wraith, who can get into tricky situations, get in that 1v6 like I showed you earlier, somehow come out alive with 8 billion armor swaps and, you know, a, a Hail Mary or two, just because it's like, this is not a, no one can plan that. But if uh, you look at this kind of feel style, 
take a take a little test. Are you a field player? Are you a static player? Let me know in the comment section below. Nice shot. No way. I'm just. I don't have any ammo. I don't have any ammo. I don't have any ammo. Oh. I'm stuck. Oh, that's a great. This is a great I'm little stuck. play right here. Cause he's in trouble. <laughs> Can this guy die, bro? Holy fuck, man. I'm over here tickling him. <laughs> it's a great tether. It's a great tether. Jesus. Dude, there is no way that's intended, right? When you Probably choose not. that the, the boxes go fucking invisible. I'm trying to run inside and I'm like, I'm T-posing outside. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, bro, you gotta read the lore. So, uh, um, there's like, oh. so the boxes in this game, they're made of, uh, Special material that Wraith can't see in that dimension. Made you know? We got revealed. revealed by Ash. Go back, go back. <laughs> we gotta be oh, at our yeah, spawn oh, building. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, she's pinging all of the boxes. <laughs> Wait, what the f? Oh, you oh, no. guys oh, actually won. Amazing angle. Reloading. Oh my god. Recharging. My door reviving. Move. Oh, oh my shit, you got saw. <laughs> I ran the. Why do you? What do you want from me, dude? This is not an easy Crowder spot. Practice. Oh, missed the kick. Let's see how he plays this. Oh, oh what? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Dude, that is nasty. That no what? Oh, oh, my God. You wait. must be kidding. How are you doing over there? Big six. Seen you in these? Oh, that's a Kraber. You guys flesh. You're winning. You're winning. Oh, blow me. Uh oh. Easy punch right there. Craver Gamer, there's a Craver on me if you want that, Johnson. Oh, I mean, if I don't have a good kill game, I have to hit a trick shot or something. Well, there's a path somewhere. I heard that boy zipping somewhere. I'm just, I'm just getting beamed. Oh my god. Stacks 503. What a beam. Also, his set, his last Nobody two bullets do so much. He clutches on the last around. two bullets so, so often. I've never died faster. <laughs> All right, six kills, six squads, 16 kills, two to the name. We've got a lot going on here, but one of the things that I want to break down to you guys about what ASU is doing that allows him, I think, to be so successful here that we can have on our own games a little bit better, especially, you know, again, translate this to stuff you're going to take out into your next matches, you're going to put on in the firing range, you're going to do in your next 1v1 or 1v3 because this is really how you will get better. ASU, notice, and I think a lot of other high-level high players like this, have uh, high expectations for themselves. Usually that's how you can only reach high expectations. I want you to go into your life think, how do you plan to get a 65 on a test, a, a, a D basically, or make a million or make $10,000 a year. And then suddenly you get the test back. You go, wow, I got a hundred percent on this test. I thought I was going to get a D on, or, Hey, I thought I was only making 10 grand working minimum wage. Somehow I just got a million dollars coming in. That, that doesn't happen. That's an, that's an elevated result without elevated expectations. Typically you see people aware that they're going to do well, believing they're doing well, going for a million dollar deal, going for a hundred percent, and then that ends up happening. Most average players, here's the problem, don't realize how powerful this is because we end up giving up fights and starting to run away, thinking we will not win. And that helps the other player to, in fact, beat us. In a close 1v1, let's take the Pathfinder, for instance. Asu got the drop on him, absolutely. But he starts to run, and then all of a sudden, Asu just has a free kill. That Pathfinder might have been able to turn and fight. Or earlier in the video, there was a very nice play that I think I wanted to mention. Where, where are we at? At uh, 7. Notice, remember this play? This is actually a really important play that decides uh, this engagement for Asu here. Uh, 
right here when he says this guy's molding. So these this guy actually shoots Asu really, really low. Absolutely. Right? Asu gets a 74 shot here. Now, what the difference is, is Asu's believing I'm going to laser this guy, and he takes the exact same steps to get aggressive and go for it. Where that player, yes, he's got his eyes on the game, but he's not as aggressive. In fact, he's not ready to shoot at Asu, and he should have been pre-firing a little bit more, and Asu is able to just get this kill. He gets 77 damage when that player only had to get about 35 on the ace. And this is just a great example of someone who believes that they're going to win, thus putting themselves in a more advantageous position position to do so this is something i think we don't see enough uh when it comes to uh when it comes to apex and when it comes to this uh let me get this out of here let me put that there and i think asu really demonstrates that very very well for us here okay i need a mental also reset. notice we'll talk about this later <laughs> notice how well asu does two things at once this is a big part of the game i want you guys to notice that and i want you to notice how he sets opponents up to be given a bad situation or a worse situation when they're fighting against him that's the thing you know, I'm dying to Willy f***ing key, dude. Your this guy is down here? Squad. Five squads, man. Oh, it's good to be back. You're better, you're better. Let the homie get some kills. What am I doing wrong? I don't know, but there's dude incoming. <laughs> I, I can't press you anything. Gotta, my, whole, my whole window oh. is dead. This is not looking good. What just happened? Should I pause the champs now or later? No, no, you, you, you send it, brother. I'm. I'm not so what I shocked. To hear. Oh my! Oh, so big nice. shot. Big oh, amped. Dude. No way. It went on the roof. I guess. I'm trolling. He missed, he missed, he missed, he missed. Okay, we're fine. Recharging shields. Dude, I can't even oh, press my window. windows. <laughs> Again, more oh, of an escape ultimate. Horrendous right now. Very, uh... What is this guy's? Easy to adjust. Do on the fly. Improvise. Feel. Nice shot right there. 11. You're better, you're better. What? He just queued, but didn't queue? Your thermite? Yeah, or one of them is. <laughs> Hello. Oh! Ow! 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 Oh, on all oh, full three looking straight at us. Oh my god, that's an optimal pad. Boom! No crappy body. Can they, they? Can they just come inside? This will be so much easier. One, I'm about to send you. Okay, I'm with it. Follow the tunnel. No way, they're instant resing. There's a creeper behind me. There's no way I would. Oh no! Shields are depleted. Recharging. Oh, I'm getting shot up by four of them. Now he does not I'm have high ground here. He is not in a good advantage. There's another team. And there is another team. So they've got to somehow get their team. their feet back together here. Good. 145. 145 on the 4300 damage, dude. What the heck? I'm about to knock the wall, dude. Oh. oh I'm about to push these dudes. When I tell you I made a mistake. Clearly not. Oh, I see this guy. I see this guy. Where did these guys all go? One less enemy. Beautiful. Nice. Beautiful. Oh, behind me. Wait, behind us. Careful. Oh my god. Uh -oh. Wait a minute. He's got a nader. He's got a nader. I'm. Oh my goodness! Beautiful. Follow me, I don't care. <laughs> What'd you do? Oh, oh my goodness! What a 
freaking. <laughs> that was actually. That was Dude, actually buddy. so the sick. Guy that the solo reef crab was Kraber Spitty, dude. Oh, I absolutely Lord. love Surely that. Surely not the Kraber Spitty, no way. The Pogo Warrior. That is disgusting. So guys, what you'll notice here with Asu and the way that he plays is that he keeps himself aware of all the elements that he has to do from the beginning uh when we looked at the 1v3 when we looked at all these dynamics where especially in the beginnings of these games asu will continually um i, I did it again <laughs> asu will continually find himself doing more than one thing and this is where i think a lot of us as apex legends players can learn to be better doing not just the first thing we think about the first fight the 1v1 but the fight immediately after that first fight taking it into the second fight and also realizing that if I'm going to go outside, I'm going to start aiming at someone, uh, and I'm fighting two other people, uh, then I'm also going to have to start looking right here. He knows exactly that the person he just downed with his EVA, or got close with his EVA, is right there. So he's keeping his eye on finishing this bullet spray. But then he's also ready to immediately swap, because he knows now that shield battery is done, he's got to deal with this Ash. And look at this. Immediately ready to do it, switches right back to the other player, uh, who unfortunately for that other player, got no damage onto him. And Asu actually, if the Gibraltar hadn't shown up, could have finished him off. But this is the idea of keeping your mind on not just that first person you're fighting, that isolated incident. Asu is incredible at it. A true master. And he always likes to set himself up and his opponents up for really bad situations push me through a door kick it down twice go through the tether or don't go through the tether you end up seeing a dynamic here in this fight i think it actually happens right before where he goes into uh, a fight with someone having this right here and he's, he throws the tether right there so the problem is this person has to push up high ground to ace and i think this is where we don't see enough uh other players doing this he now knows that you go right you're going to get slowed. You're going to take damage. We're already in a very close fight. I've only got 70 health. You about the same. So, therefore, I'm putting you in a lose situation there. If you climb up, you're going to expose yourself. Now I have high ground, and I'm going to shoot you before you can shoot me back. Therefore, that's a lose situation. Number five that Asu does so well is how do you set up opponents to be between a rock and a hard place, creating lose-lose situations. In tennis, this is making an opponent hit a winner. If you guys don't know what it means, it means that you aren't making mistakes or errors. You're making them have to hit such a phenomenally good shot against you to score that the onus, the pressure is on them to perform, not on you to make a mistake. This puts all of that effort, that energy on them being really, really good. Chances are, People will make more mistakes than be insanely good. If you come across Asu, you might be in trouble, uh, as Asu knows. But because he makes that hesitation, he now can direct exactly where that player is going to be. He slides out, knowing he's not going to push him through the tether, and he has the PK shot immediately on him. An incredible showcase from an incredible player, Asu. Five rules. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And as always, show some love to Ace. I'll see you guys next time.